Hey there folks, this is Abel, and I'm gonna do a video on my materials. Um, some of you have asked me about what I use and how to save money on art supplies, so I figured that I would just get into this and kind of show you what I got. Um, I'm gonna start out, I use paper for most of my stuff. Um, I can talk about canvas in a different video, but I just usually pick up whatever's cheapest. Um, this is Canson Oil and Acrylic. This is a 9x12. I cut it in half. I make a 9x6. I also keep the 11x14. It's just a larger size. Um, it's pretty nice, I think. It's really sturdy, nice and thick. I'll pull a piece out for you guys. And I will, if I can, there we go. And that is the Canson acrylic paper. It's really nice. I like it a lot. Um, you can get it at Walmart, but it's cheaper if you go online and order it on Amazon by like, I think it takes half the price off. And if you're like a prime person, then that's really nice. And it helps you out a whole bunch. Um, I also use fairly inexpensive paints. Um, I use the Apple Barrel acrylics, which are pretty nice. Um, I will show you the bottles and I will show you what they look like on the palette and on the paper. Um, this is um, Bright Magenta. That's a really nice color that I really like. It's my nice dark one. Um, I blend it a lot with a bunch of other stuff depending on what I need. This is Pink Eraser. It's a nice medium pink. Um, it's really solid for most things. Um, I like it a lot. This is Fuchsia, which is what I use for my lighter pink. If I need to go lighter, I just add some white or add whatever I need to get the right tone. And it's really nice. I I really like these. This is Jack Lantern, my orange. It's brighter. I like them because they're a little bit thinner than a traditional acrylic paint, which is why they're so cheap. But also, I think it gives a lot of really good coverage. And this is Apricot, which is my lighter orange. I end up blending my oranges and yellows a lot, so I'll show you the yellows with that too. That's Yellow Flame. It's a nice light yellow. It's I generally get the same couple paints and then blend them because I know how they work, I know what color they look like, I know what to expect. Um, this is yellow, just straight up yellow. It's a nice bright yellow, it's real good. Um, here we've got New Shamrock, which is a nice bright green. I mix it to make my mint with some lighter blue. Um, this is Christmas green, it's nice and dark. If I need darker, add some blue, add some black, whatever I need to do. This is my go-to dark blue, which I use a whole ton of. I think it, like, for some reason I just really like this color blue. It's nice and bright, but it's not, like, garishly blue. It's just a solid dark blue. I'm very passionate about that. This is just some straight-up turquoise. It's real nice. It's a good medium tone. It's got a little bit of a green tint to it, which is really nice. And, I don't know, I think it just adds a lot of depth. I like it a bunch. This is actually a substitute for the um, parrot blue that I usually get. This is pool blue. It's essentially the same color for pretty much all intents and purposes. It's just ever so slightly different, but it's not really noticeably different. I use them interchangeably depending on what I can find at stores. This is Wild Iris. This is, it's a nice like red purple, you know, it's real good. I really like it. Um, this is another one that's kind of interchangeable. This is Lilac Mist. I use it in place of the Petunia Purple. I'm realizing that I know all these by name, and that's kind of gives some insight into my life. And then I've got Purple Pansy, nice solid dark purple, real good. Um, I actually took a long time to find that specific purple, and I'm really glad that I found it. Um, going into colors still, this is my bright red. I used to get a lot of orders that required red because I used to paint a lot of Garner by 21 Pilots. Um, I bought in big tubes, now that's a habit, and I just have con continued to do that. I don't know why, it's just, it's what I do with that now for some reason. I also keep giant things, ooh, I just threw something, whoopsies. Um, I also keep large ones of white and black, just straight up. They're good for mixing, they help with blending, they're, they're real good for just about everything. And then I have some metallics, which are the Deco Art brand, for the most part. Yeah, I think I've got all Deco Art here. Um, I like Splendid Gold, it's a nice bright, like kind of gaudy gold. And then a softer one is Champagne Gold, and I've got Silver, which is just... Huh, it's silver. Um, I'm going to show you what they look like all on paper, if you'd like. Um, if not, skip past this part, because I'm just going to be swatching. 
Oh, and for brushes, generally I use these three. These are just, I can't even tell what brand they are. They're covered in paint. They're covered in goo. Um, they're cheap dollar brushes from Walmart. I don't take care of my brushes very well, and I will confess that. So, really, whatever. Just do whatever brushes make you happy. Um, I get cheap ones at dollar stores because, or not dollar stores, not quite that cheap, but... I really just don't find that it is helpful to have an expensive brush, especially when I know me and I know I won't take care of it. So we're going to kind of swatch in case you're curious. Um, this is bright magenta, which is a real nice color. I like it a lot. Um, here is pink eraser, which again, that nice medium pink, there's a tone difference that I like a lot in that. I hope that this isn't like wildly boring to you guys. Um, Here's Fuchsia, that nice lighter pink. It's kind of vibrant, but you can dull it down with a little bit, like a tiny touch of green, or you can dull it down using white, whatever you want. Um, here's that jack-o'-lantern color, which is real nice bright orange. And then this is a somewhat subtle change, but I tend to like use it a lot. This is apricot. It's a bit subtle in difference, but I think that the, it has a lot of depth when I use both. Here's that yellow which was nice and bright. It's real nice. Um, and then Yellow Flame, which is good pastel yellow. It's just solid pastel. It's real good. I like it a lot. Um, and then here's that new Shamrock, which is my nice brighter green. And here is the uh, oh Christmas green. That's what it's called. It's a nice solid dark green. Again, it's a bit like subtle difference, whatever. But I also tend to mix my Parrot or Pool Blue with my um, new Shamrock because it gives a really nice, like, light, almost mint green color that I really like. So that's that mix there. I keep it on my palette. I just I haven't found a color in a bottle that I like as much, so I mix both this one and this one here, which is that nice Pool Blue, which I really like these colors. Um, that's why I stick with them. That's why I know them by name. Um, here's Admiral Blue, which is that good solid dark blue. It's just a good color. <laughs> and then we've got Turquoise, which I'll swatch up here. And moving into the purples, we've got that Purple Pansy, which is that dark one. Which is, I don't know, it's just a nice solid. It's, I like it because it's really rich. It's really deep. It's nice. It's something that's hard to mix. And also hard to mix is this Wild Iris. I've found ways to get really close, but I just really like that nice color with it. And then, of course, we've got that Lilac Mist right there. And I've got Bright Red, which, for some reason, this particular bottle of it was a little watery, but that's fine. You just gotta layer it on a bit thick. That's my hashtag tip of the day. Um, also, we have these metallics, which... For some reason, you have to shake them real good or else they'll get real runny and kind of gross because the, like, the metallic element and the um, binder agent, whatever it's called, um, those can get separated a little, and so they're kind of goopy. This one's being goopy, but whatevs. It's cool. You can just mix it up, make sure you mix it good, and then you're all set. And then you gotta shake that one, too. I tend to find that this champagne gold needs a little extra mixing, but that's alright. It might just be the bottle that I have is a little runny, because sometimes there's variants, especially in these cheaper brands. And you just gotta kinda like, when you buy them, you give them a little shake and see if they're watery. With that red, I didn't do that, and that's why it's so gross. <laughs> um, we're gonna go in with that silver, which is just a nice solid silver. It's Oh, I can't really give it anything else. It's just, it's silver. And then that champagne gold that I really like. It's nice. It's kind of sheer, which is all right for what I use it for. And then we've got the splendid gold, which is brighter, bolder, a little bit gaudier, golder. <laughs> I really like it. But those are the paints that I use. They're all like 50 cents to a dollar. They're, I don't do anything particularly fancy with paint. Just like I don't do anything fancy with brushes because, you know, I'm never going to actually use them correctly. So, you know, I've learned to work with it. If you're used to a fuller bodied acrylic, it might be a learning curve, but I think it's easy to learn to get the hang of. Um, over here, we've just got a little paper towel, whatever brand you got. All good. All set. Don't need anything fancy. 
I have a palette knife. I picked it up for like a couple dollars over at Blick. I think that might be like a Michigan thing, but it's just a little art store. It was a couple bucks. It works good. You want one with a nice spring. That was, that was real good. But that's real nice. It's simple. Costs a couple bucks. This is my paint cup. It's got some soap in it because sometimes I add soap. It says I heart Germany, but I'm not going to tip it so it's real easy to see because, you know, I pour water all over myself. I think I got that in Frankenmuth, like a gift from my parents or something. It costs a few dollars. Don't get anything too fancy for your paint cups. You're going to get them real gross. Use an old mug. Um, with this, this is my palette. It's covered in paint right now, so sorry about that. I didn't clean it for this. Um, <laughs> but it's just another one of those things. I think it was like $8 at Blick. I had to have it for my, um, my painting class for, um, actual college painting. So I got it, and I'd always use paper plates. I find that I like this better, especially when it dries and you can peel it off. It feels real good. Um, Masking tape. I like nice clean edges on my papers. Um, I cover them up with some masking tape. Um, I just use like Scotch brand. It's You don't need anything fancy. You really don't. And I use like I think 0.7 inch. I've used 0.9 before. That's fine. I don't know. I'm not really picky. I am picky about one thing though. And this is going to be our last item because I don't use a ton of stuff. But this is a G2 Pilot gel pen. You can get in 10, you can get in 0 0.7, you can get in 0 0.5, doesn't matter that much. It is the nicest flowing pen on the face of the planet, and I love it. Let's see if I can write my name, and you guys can judge me. And even on this acrylic paper, which is really bumpy, it gives a nice smooth line, it flows real good. I'm very passionate about these pens. If you do not have one, pick one up. Pick it up for your artwork, pick it up for your office work, for your writing, for your class, whatever. These are the best pens on the planet. You can get a two-pack for like $3. They'll last forever. You can get refillable cartridges. You're all good. It's so nice. I cannot recommend them enough. Um, that would bring us to the end of the video. Um, the only other material I really have is coffee, and I'm not too particular about brand on that. I just I drink whatever coffee is put in front of me. Um, but I do think that that is all our materials. Um, I use a little paper cutter to cut my paper, but again, brand doesn't matter on that. Um, that seems to be about it. Um, I know this is not like super specific, but again, but again, I don't think brand matters all that much for most things. I prefer a specific brand of paint because it's what I'm used to using. Um, I don't really think that there's any other paints if you like a waterier, not waterier, but like thinner paint. If you like that, I'm not going to knock any of the other brands. They're fine. I think they're just, they're swell. But yeah, um, I'm not super particular and there's ways to get, I don't know, materials that make art affordable and there's ways to get them cheaper. Definitely look online. I found that the actual in-store is cheaper for the paints and such. These were like $3 online, but like 50 cents in-store. So just double check and like make sure you're getting the best price you can. Um, I don't have anything else to really discuss, but yeah, if you want to see more videos about this kind of stuff and more, like, about the creation process itself, then let me know in the comments. And if you like this, give it a like, and if you want to see more, give it a subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you want to know whenever I do something. Not, like, everything in my life, but, you know, art-wise. But yeah, that is about all I've got for you guys today. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. I love you, and I will see you again. Bye-bye.